What on earth has possessed me to get rid of all my affiliate marketing links from my descriptions? Watch the video and find out. Hi, Brian James, I'm Micro Four Thirds Guy with you once again. And um, third time doing this video, third time. First time I tried doing it today, I did it a good outside one. I'm trying to be a little bit artistic for you, you see, instead of just sitting in all the time. So I went out, nice outside place. The wind was horrendous, could not get the sound anywhere near usable whatsoever, even with one of those fluffy things on top of the microphone. Second one, I decided, right, I'll just sit in the van and do it. And I thought, I'm sick of sitting in the van doing these videos. So I decided, even though I've uploaded that one, I haven't actually made it public yet, but I have uploaded it, but it's not good enough. So I'm going to do a third version in my, in my dining room. So I hope you like the, um, the, the different sort of scenario. Um, I'm doing this especially for you, you see. I am doing it for you. Brian James, I'm Micro Four Thirds Guy. Um, and um, if you do enjoy my videos, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. There's a link below and hit the bell for notifications and all that sort of stuff. There's a PayPal link if you want to leave me a coffee. And don't forget a thumbs up. You know the score. You know the score by now. Um, but I got a, an email through a couple of days ago from a guy called Mike Chapman. Uh, hello, Mike. If you if you're watching this, thank you very much for the uh, for the prompt to do this video. And he, along with a couple of other people, actually, who've mentioned this as well. But Mike's was the uh, probably the strongest letter. Want to know where the affiliate links to Amazon have gone from the descriptions below? And I'll tell you where they've gone. Actually, I've had a bit of a change in what I'm thinking now. I've got to put this into perspective. I've got nothing against Amazon or anything like that, but I do have to put this into perspective a little bit. I had some affiliate links for things like um, OMD EM1 Mark II, Mark III, uh, Lumix G9, all below. And what the affiliate links do is that I get money from them. If you buy through those links, I get money from them. The problem is, um, how do I put this? How do I put this best? YouTube, um, I'm monetized on YouTube now, so when people watch these videos, if they watch the adverts, then I get a little bit of money, tiny little bit. Um, I'm not going to get rich on it, I promise you that. It's, it's, a, it's a minute amount, but it's a little bit of income. And since the lockdown last March, I haven't had a photography business as such, and uh, also had another business as a professional entertainer, and that's gone for a ball of chalk. You might have seen one of my earlier videos, there's a link up above, uh, where I've just done my first professional gig, uh, my first proper professional gig to an audience just last week. Um, so it's been a, a bit of a, a difficult time. So the only income I've got is from this and from the kind generation, uh, from the kind donations of people who have actually bought me a coffee in the link below. And to each one of those, I really do thank you. It's it's enabling me to do these videos. It's paying for fuel. To, I say it's for a coffee, but basically it's to pay for fuel. When I've been doing the Hadrian's Wall videos, um, it's to pay for parking and all sorts of things like that to bring you these videos. And without you, I couldn't make them. So thank you very much. But one of the other ways to make some money was the affiliate links. And I started thinking about it and I thought, well, I don't feel comfortable about this. Um, why I don't feel comfortable about this is I went into Carlisle. I live in Carlisle, just in the north of England, just south of the Scottish border. And I went into Carlisle the other day and I had a look around and there's an awful lot of shops closed. You'll see some pictures as we go through um, on this. Awful lot of shops closed up, um, not to be reopened for a while. And I looked at my local camera shop. Now I've got a really good relationship with my local camera shop. Uh, as you'll know, I am a great uh, advocate for buying um, good quality used um, second-hand equipment, but also I do buy new equipment from them. My EM1 Mark II, I've just recently bought from them. You'll, again, you'll see a, a video link above if you want to see the comparison on that to my Lumix G9. And the Lumix G9 I bought brand new from them. So I'm not adverse to buying new or used. But I do like to buy quality and I like to be looked after when I'm doing things. And one of the problems with doing these uh, affiliate links, the mail order, it's, it's putting money into someone's pocket on a different continent. Um, and, you know, I... I talk to the guys and girls in in my local camera shop um, 
and obviously there are camera shops all over the place. This isn't this isn't just um, dedicated. This isn't just pointed towards my local camera shop. This is to all local camera shops wherever you are in the world. But I talk to them, and when I go into these places, I get a lot of really good advice. I've made friends with some of the staff in those places, so. I trust what they say and the beauty with a specialist shop like a camera shop is when you go in there you'll see they've got all sorts of brands and the advantage of that is they play with them they play with these pieces of equipment every day they know the differences they know what feels good what doesn't feel good they know what gives problems um, usually you'll find if there's a brand which isn't represented it's probably because they've had issues with it in the past reliability wise not always but quite often I used to sell hi-fi and TVs and I had the same thing. If we had a brand which was particularly um, poor reliability wise, we didn't want to keep it in because it would, it would sour relationships with the customers and we work hard to get our customers. Um, and I find this with camera shops. If you get a good camera shop, they'll know what's good and bad. They'll instinctively try and put you towards what's a good buy and what's not. And for instance, the um, my local camera shop, which is Wilkinson's in Carlisle, I'm not, by the way, paid by them. I've got nothing to do with them apart from being a customer and being quite loyal as a customer on that. Um, so I'm not being paid for this and I don't get any, any freebie benefits for mentioning this video. Although they did offer me a cup of coffee on one of the comments because I was nice to them last time. So I might end up getting paid for a cup of coffee. I might end up getting paid in the form of a cup of coffee, a real cup of coffee, not the link below, but a real cup of coffee. I like that idea, it's good. Um, but the the thing is when you go into these places, they're helpful, they're knowledgeable, and they're also keyed. Most of these people are selling cameras and camera equipment because they have an interest in cameras and camera equipment. And I suddenly realized that by trying to push the sales through uh, an online seller, which I've got, as I say, no problems with on online sellers, but you can't go in and try the equipment you can't get that specialist advice and that advice is worth its weight in gold because it's the sort of thing which you can't go out and buy you have to be given it by somebody that advice and it's usually very very well thought out advice so I felt uncomfortable about doing these affiliate links but I also started to look at into the price of things now people say that local dealers you know local shops they're gonna be more expensive more overhead and costs well that used to be true I think but what I'm finding is an awful lot of the online retailers now, because there's less competition, there's less, they've got more of a monopoly, the prices aren't particularly reduced. In fact, in some cases, they're more. Now, most local dealers will give you some sort of a loyalty discount if you do that. And I, I through my local uh, store, they offered me a loyalty card a good couple of years ago because I'd bought a couple of things from them. And, well, I'm not a great fan of loyalty cards, I'll be honest with you. Um, I'm not so keen on people having all my data, but I, I signed up for it because it was 5% off. And I thought, well, here we go. Here comes the tirade of emails. We've got a special deal on. We're going to do this, that, and the other. Come down for the... Oh, I can't be bothered with it. And then I never got them. They never came. Those t That tirade of emails never came. The only emails I started getting were my invoices, my receipts for things that I'd bought being emailed straight through to me, which was great. So I was really impressed with that. But it did mean that I get 5% discount just for having this card. Now with that 5% discount, compared to the places I was giving affiliate links to, I was actually getting the equipment cheaper. Okay, so I'm getting the equipment cheaper, I'm getting free advice and I'm getting really good advice and I'm getting a lot of backup. So why would I be doing affiliate links? Well, the only reason to do that is because I wanted the money. And I suddenly realised I wasn't that desperate for money that I'd rather dump on the people who actually give me the support. So I decided that rather than give support to other people and just be in it for the fast book, I would rather actually give a little bit of loyalty back. So that's the reason for this video to answer Mike. That's why I've dropped the, the, um, the um, associate links with other people because I can get fantastic value from a local shop and what I would say actually is this if you don't use your local shop and you go elsewhere when you need them and you want that bit of equipment and you're not sure if you're going to spend 1700 2000 2500 3500 5000 whatever it is pounds on on your equipment we all know how expensive camera equipment can be 
they won't be there for you to go and have a look. They won't be there to give the advice and they won't be there to give you the support. Um, so I'm very keen on the idea of supporting your local dealer. They are worth the weight in gold. And when I saw those empty shops around the rest of the town, I thought, well, if we're not careful, the camera shop will probably be one of those empty units soon. So give a little bit of thought under that. The other thing is as well, that I'm really keen on with this is the fact that um, I'm recording this on my Olympus OMD EM1 Mark II. Um, had it a few weeks, bought it as a, a second hand camera and when I originally bought my G9 a couple of years ago I was in the market for a G9 or an OMD EM1 Mark II which, were the, which was the current camera at the time and they had a particularly good deal on the G9 but they gave me sensible advice on both cameras now, if you really want the money, if they really wanted to push hard, they would have pushed me towards the OMD EM1 Mark II because I was very open saying, I just want the camera which is going to suit me best. Um, and the thing is that they didn't push me down that. They gave me very, very level-headed advice, very even advice on both. And I came to the conclusion to buy the G9. It was on a colossal deal. I don't know how they made actually money, any money out of it, but it was on a fantastic deal um, along with the with battery grip and all sorts of things and it was just a ridiculous, seriously ridiculous price. Brand new. But I always hankered after an AM1 Mark II because I am quite loyal to Olympus. I've always, I've always um, had a hankering for Olympus for 40 odd years. Um, and so when there was an offer of an AM1 Mark II second hand, which again, as I say, I bought a couple of weeks ago, I went to them. But I had a good word with the manager today. I was in the shop today, um, and looking as to what I was interested in for the next purchase. Um, and I had a word with the manager in there. I spent about 20 minutes talking to him, which was really interesting because I had a good conversation and asked him what their philosophy was on second hand equipment. Now we all know that new equipment comes with warranties and all sorts of things and it's backed up by the manufacturer of the warranty because you actually, although your contract is with the dealer in the UK, your warranty is given by the manufacturer. But second hand equipment doesn't fall into that, especially in the UK at least. Um, but I was really pleased to find out that first of all they give a year's warranty, I've got a year's warranty on this AM1 Mark II from them. And because they are official dealers for the brand, if there's something goes wrong with it, it'll end up going back to, in this case, Olympus. Or if it was a Lumix camera, go back to Lumix. And I also watched them buying some equipment in. There was a guy with a, a Nikon camera um, wanting to trade that in. And I watched the, the care and the uh, precision that they actually checked the equipment over which they were buying in. They weren't awkward with the guy. They weren't trying to undercut them. But they were very, very straightforward insofar as saying if there was dust in the lens and to what quantity, if there was fungus growing in the lenses, um, the general condition of the camera. And they looked up on various tables to get a reasonable price and gave, I thought, a, a very accurate and very um, reasonable um, quote for the guy. I don't know if he went through with a deal, but it was nothing to do with me. But it did give me a great deal of satisfaction that the people who I'm going to be buying equipment off cared about what I was going to be buying from them because they cared about how they bought it in themselves. And if you're going to be buying second-hand equipment from the likes of eBay, for instance, can you really say that? Do you have any fallback? Do you have a warranty on that? And again, this is because it's, um, it's a local camera business. So, in conclusion, why have I given up on affiliate links? I don't need the fast book. I can actually get more profit out of, the, out of the information I get and the relationship I get than I can from money itself. So if you don't see the affiliate links, I'm sorry, go and have a look on, on those sites yourself. But I would actually suggest having a look on the sites for your local camera dealer. I will actually put a link down to the, my local camera dealer. And as I say, they're not paying me. They haven't pushed me into this. They haven't asked me to do this. They don't even know I'm doing this. Um, but I'm going to put it on because they're a small chain around the north of England. They do mail order, so if you want to buy mail order, you can. They do, uh, they're a small chain throughout the north of England, um, but they've just been really, really good with me. Um, and I like the way they work. They're a family firm, which again, has a little bit of a buy-in. It's not just some uh, faceless con conglomerate who are doing it. It's a family firm, so they've got an interest as well, because at the end of the day, it puts food onto their, onto their family's tables. And it's the, the money that I pay over for these cameras stays in the local economy because it goes out to pay the wages of local people. So, 
Hope that's of use to you. Hope that's answered your question, Mike, and the other couple of people who, who actually wrote in. As I say, Mike had the, the longest question. It sent me an email which, which must have been four or five paragraphs um, questioning in quite detail as to why I'd given up on doing the affiliate links. Um, I'm actually really rather pleased that somebody had spotted it to tell you the truth. So, as I say, my name is Brian James. I'm Micro Four Thirds Guy. Um, whatever you're shooting, enjoy your photography. Take your camera out. Take it out in this weather, whether it's blowing a gale and really noisy, whether it's rain, sun, whatever it is. Take a camera out, take some fantastic photos and enjoy your photography. Until the next time, I see, I'll see you soon. Bye bye.